Hello and welcome back to another Impact Review from the Impact Lounge. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro. How are you doing, Ro? Good, Adam, and yourself? Yeah, really good, thanks. Really good. Uh, I'm down in sunny London today. I'm uh, away from my home country, out of Scotland. I'm down in England, uh, but I won't let that affect my performance, uh, uh, although the sun is kind of throwing me off because in Scotland we get terrible weather and it's like 25 degrees down here today, so I'm not used to it. I'm sweating. Anyway, uh, I'm sure our listeners didn't tune in to hear the local weather in the, in my area. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, if first time stopping by uh, the show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, you know, we're looking to try and get 4,000 subscribers very soon. We're getting more and more content up all the time. So please do make sure you do subscribe because, you know, this really is one of the best places to get your impact news and thoughts and reviews and those kind of things. And uh, Ro and I are going to be doing our best to pump out some more stuff as well in the coming weeks and also more importantly we're going to try and get up a little bit quicker if we can um you know at the moment bq is very busy with his new job those kind of things so it has put a bit of a delay on it but hopefully going forward uh, we're going to turn around things a bit faster also uh, as i said if it's your first time stopping by let us know what you think uh, hit a like hit uh, a dislike if you don't like it we don't mind and and also drop us some comments and before we start this week's review i was going to talk about someone who commented on last week's show uh, but before I do that, we always do usually give a shout out to a few uh, other good podcasts and good guys out there. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to Ro to run through those. Yeah, just um, same as always, uh, the Six Sided Podcast do, does a tremendous job covering Impact Wrestling. You can find them on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash Six Sided Podcast. That's if you're using the de- desktop. Or otherwise, you can find them obviously on the SoundCloud app. And then as well as the Impact Fan Zone on Facebook for all you Facebook users and also the Impact Lounge. Great. Okay. So as I said, you know, we're going to dive into the Impact Review in a minute. But, you know, I do want to answer some of the questions that we've had this week. And it's great to see that people are leaving us comments. And, and there was one particular good one. Uh, the comment of the week is from uh, uh, Ramon Delage. I don't know if that's his real name. If it is, brilliant name. Uh, I feel like I should be going to Ramon or something like that. It sounds more exotic than the way that I said it. But anyway, Ramon, thanks for your uh, comments. And he basically said five things he, he thinks that should be in the current impact product. And I'm just going to go through these with you, Ro, to see what you thought as well. We won't stay too long on them because obviously we've got a review to do as well. But as he took the time to, to write this uh, quite lengthy response i think uh, it's only fair that we do touch on it so ramon thanks for your comments so the first one is bringing back the tag team knockout title what do you think about that you know i know bq touched on it before i i don't mind it but i just wonder will it be able to get enough time on tv and then on top of that and, and I know what he has said is with their partnerships, you can always bring in women from some of these other partnerships. But, you know, do you have enough women where you can establish a division? That would just kind of be my thing on top of having the TV time to devote to that. Because we are kind of already see now they're starting. And as they're starting to get some tag teams with the male tag division, you know, they're able to get uh, have them in matches that aren't necessarily surrounded around the title will you be able to dedicate that same type of time for a women's tag division? Absolutely. And this kind of cuts into his second point, which is bringing back the television t- championship. And I think that is more important than bringing in a, a, another title. I think what we need to do is solidify the mid-card title uh, before we bring in a, a female uh, tag title. So, um, yeah, the television t- championship, you know, I've, I've no problem with bringing the TV title back. You know, to me, a mid-card belt is a mid-card belt. And I know this one's got a legacy, but if it's the grand championship or the TV title or any other title that you want to call it, it doesn't really make much difference. It's a mid-card title. and But I do think that they do have to have a look at this and, and bring something that the non-main eventers can fight over. Thoughts? See, with that, like, I'm in agreement. Um, uh, you know, I kind of waver back and forth with it because, you know, you th- like to believe they just got new belts, but we see in the Grand Championships the only one that didn't get the makeover. So if they're going to do away with it to bring something else, I mean, you know, we know they're kind of running, and I'm not trying to count their pockets, but they're, they're running on a tight budget. And to get new belts, it's pretty expensive, I like to believe. So, I mean, and you got the Grand Championship on Austin Aries, who's carrying it out and, you know, claiming he's champion. 
just run with it I, at the, at this point. And I mean, if you want to rename it, then fine, you know, but to kind of scrap a title and then have to start all over. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really confused, but I, I get the, the idea of having a television belt just because, you know, that could be your mid card. It can be defended every week because it's television. It says it in the name, but I mean, I don't know until I see what's the future with the grand title where I'm not seeing that at all on TV or mention, then I could really entertain the idea of another mid card belt. Yeah. But just with regards to the actual belt, I, I really like the grand championship belt. I think it's one of the best looking ones I've got, although it does have the six sided kind of dimensions to it, which doesn't really go with uh, the current uh, format. But there you go. I do like the design of the belt. OK, number three, an authority figure. I I'll touch on this one quickly. Um, I have no, you know, objections to it. We got quite a few authority figures that came in and disappeared. You know, the likes of uh, Bruce Pritchard and then um, what's the other guy's name? Can't think of his name. Oh, it's escaped me. Uh, the one with the tennis racket, Brother Love. No, I was not Cornet. Cornet, Jim Cornet. Sorry, Brother Love was uh, Bruce Pritchard. Uh, Cornet is who I meant. Yeah. So they've come in. They've gone. Oh, I quite like an authority figure, but at the same time. You know, if you're not keeping the talent, then is it worth it bringing someone in just for a few shows and then disappearing? Uh, you mentioned Chandler, uh, sorry, Joseph Park. Um, I quite, I, I'd be quite happy if Joseph Park did it. I think, you know, he's someone who is going to stick around because um, he's been there since day dot. I and mean, it's not like WWE are going to offer him a contract at his stage of his career of wrestling ability. So, yeah, they could do, but I don't think it really adds anything to the show. They're doing well without it. Yeah, um, you know what? I think what happens is a lot of us fans, I don't want to say all, but we're conditioned to believe what one company with this, you know, the main company, the flagship company that's, you know, known worldwide does. That's kind of the standard. And I think what makes Impact and even other promotions, maybe stuff I don't follow necessarily, but what makes them unique is they're not following that mold. So, an authority figure I don't think is needed in Impact. They've done it in the past. I mean, yeah, you know, it's cool. But I think at this point and what they're doing now, it's not needed. You know, I could see in maybe in some scenarios that it is. I don't think Impact needs an authority figure, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. All right, next one. Moving on quickly. There's only two more to go. Uh, debut or bring back tag teams. I think we've talked about it before. They are debuting. They debuted one this week, which we'll come on to. So I think it's right to have more tag teams, but at the same time, you just got to fit them in on the show. So if you are going to bring them back, then, you know, how does that affect the X Division and, and, um, and you know, the space that for the existing tag team? So I, I like the sentiment, but I don't know how workable it is. Right, number five. Oh, I, I think, I, if I could just make just a quick comment, I think all they need to do, because, you know, right now you got LAX, you got Cult of Lee, you got OVE. If you get one more tag team, I guess... You know, there's rumored that DJ Z and Everett are going to start tagging. I think you could build around those four tag teams and then, you know, you could kind of have some makeshift tag teams. But they need kind of four, three or four solid, consistent teams. And then you build a derision, uh, division around that. So I think they're kind of headed towards that direction. We just got to see how things play out. And you've got Falabar and KM, although after one match, it always looks like that. Let's <laughs> break it up. Uh but funny enough, I would have actually liked to have seen them as a tag team. I think uh, that Falabar is super over with the fans. KM's great on the mic. And I think the two of them together would have been a great tag team, to be honest. But there you go. Right. Um, final one. Uh, bring back the Bound for Glory series. And I really like this. I've been quite vocal about it in the past. I, th I like the, the idea of, of a, a league table, but also I used to like the um, Bound for Glory series. I actually think they should have a league table for all the belts. You know, and that way it automatically means that every win and loss has an impact on where you stand in the championship runnings. So to me, whether it's the BFG series or whether it's just uh, a league table, I, I think it's a good idea. You know, the thing I would like them to do in the foreseeable future, and you can do that, but have, you know, tournaments here or maybe the gauntlets for number one contendership, because I think it gives an opportunity, even if you have participants that probably aren't you know, ready for that big push for the championship, just to have him included in that match means something. So like I would say with the knockouts, the one match that I, I used to love, and I mean, I know it's associated with then TNA is when they had the queen of, um, I want to say, is it queen of the mountain or is something with queen, 
but something like that. And you have five or six uh, knockouts. And sometimes they'd have the championship on the line. Sometimes it'd be number one contendership. But matches like that where it gets all you know all the people on the card and stuff, and it gives them something to do. And whether or not they they have a chance to win or not, you know, it's here nor there. But the fact that you're getting them there and showing that hey, they're a part of this. They're you know they they all have one common goal. Absolutely. But anyway, that was uh, our, our listeners' question of the week. Thank you for that, Ramon. Uh, Ramon, uh, really appreciate it. Any of your other listeners. Uh, want to ask us anything or our thoughts on, on a certain topic, just drop us a comment in the section below. Uh, obviously, if you're listening on YouTube, you can do that. If it's on any other format, whether it's Facebook, which you can follow us at the Impact Lounge, or wherever it may be, just drop us a comment and we'll do our best to, to work into the show. Right, okay, so let's dive into this week's review. Uh, we've already taken up uh, 50 minutes of your time talking about that. Let's uh, dive into the review. So what did you think of the overall show this week? Yeah, it was excellent, man. Um... The one thing, like I was telling you offline, it seems like they're starting to become a little bit more storyline driven, which I like personally. And, you know, you listeners, share your thoughts. Let me know if you guys kind of like more of a story driven product. And um, everything seems to have some sort of purpose. Like we're not kind of getting getting too much thrown together things like every match. There's some something behind it. And I think that's you know, you like that as a thing and it becomes easier to follow. Absolutely. And I, I've always said, and you know, from day dot when I did my first uh, review with, with BQ and, and all the reasons I don't review, I've always said, I'm not someone who watches it for the wrestling. I watch it for the stories. And they're getting back to that. And I think it's great. The only thing that dismays me is just, I don't understand why the ratings have gone down this week, you know, um, because last week you had the draft. I can understand it, you know, although I'm British and, you know, the draft isn't a big thing for us, but I understand it over in the States. But I don't understand why this week uh, did so badly because it was a good show. And as you say, it's storyline driven. It's rewarding viewers who tune in week in, week out. And I just don't get it. It's a shame because I thought it was a good show. Yeah, it. Um, I think it got, I want to say it was 299,000. The thing you have to take into account out here, and I mean, I know, you know, with sports, you got some that are, sport, you have wrestling fans and sports fans and some that are just wrestling fans. Right now, there's the playoffs, the NBA playoffs. And, you know, myself, I'm a big NBA fan, and my team is in it. So, you know, a lot of times I'll DVR impact, and, you know, probably I, I know the um, the ratings are, are determined when people watch it when it, you know, originally airs. So I think that's the thing. And I think when the summer comes, when uh, basketball is done and – in a, a well, I think football has like spring training. I think we'll see the ratings get back to where they are. It will. I don't think it was anything to say this show was bad. I think it more has to do with the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Well, let's uh, dive into the review. So uh, we kicked off with a number of highlights from last week. You know, like Austin Aries addressing the roster, Moose wanting the championship, Sue Young and Rosemary, uh, the, the hospital attack again. So uh, it was just. Do you know? I, I like that they do this. Uh, I, I don't think wrestling shows do it often enough and i think it's great that they're rewarding viewers who haven't well not who haven't seen it but if you have missed a show because you're watching the draft at least you know what's going on and it plays back into your uh, you know storyline driven by showing all of these things you can catch up really quickly it doesn't mean that if you miss a show that's you out so yeah good way to kick off yeah i agree um i think what it does too it's kind of you could say tailoring to the casual viewer just say somebody who hasn't watched impact in so long or might have missed a couple episodes you know due to whatever you know it's a quick rundown and i think that helps because then you know for a fan they're able to catch up like okay this is everything that's going on so i haven't missed too much yeah and um i also it's like uh, the the next week on impact as well which they don't seem to do anymore uh but can you remember they went through a stage of uh, especially I remember around uh, the Bully Ray putting Dixie through the table. You know, they kept on saying, you know, you know this is happening next week. And I, I quite like it when they do the, the highlights back for the week after. I don't know what your thoughts are, Renan. You know, I, I think what they're just doing now, they, I mean, they do the advertise of the matches, but I mean, it, it. I get what they're trying to do. I think it, when you're talking about next week, this is going to happen. I mean, we're not supposed to be able to foresee as far as no. angles and things like that. That's how it's supposed to play but you know to advertise a match that's fine so so anyway we kicked off with Eli without Scott uh so that was already 50% not as good as it could have been uh but Eli is obviously awesome and uh yeah he came out and was 
interrupted by both Aries and Pentagon Jr. So uh, he, he uh, sorry, I take that back. He starts ripping on Pentagon, I should say, on his catchphrase. So uh, this, I, I, I've got to say, Eli Drake, I just think gets better and better on the mic. Yeah, you know, and I think it's getting to a point, especially now we kind of see with uh, Aries turning heel. I mean, if they commit to it, I just don't have them just go all full face. But we kind of see it now. I mean, he's having a, he's in credit to Eli. He stays heel. He's not trying to be a cool heel. But I mean, it is hard. I mean, the fans eat up everything he says. I mean, I don't hear too many boos when, you know, he comes out or anything like that. So um, I think it's just a matter of time till he makes the, the full face turn. And that might be beneficial for him, you know, with Aries turning turning hill that way there's he has somebody to bounce off of because that's something that we've seen in the past with certain wrestlers where you know one makes a turn but then there's really nobody on that level that they can really have a rivalry with yeah absolutely i i think that the departure of del rio has kind of thrown their plans uh, i say del rio el patron sorry uh it's thrown their plans and that's why they've turned austin heel so quickly and as you quite rightly said they might turn Eli into the baby face. But the interesting part of it, the dynamic of it, is that Moose is obviously a baby face. So that would make sense that he's going up against Aries uh, as, you know, as the baby face challenger against the heel, which puts Eli Drake on the sidelines again. And it's a bit of a shame. Do you think he's going to resign? Yeah, I, be- I believe so. And maybe that's just the optimism of my end because he's a he's the guy and i think you know just piggybacking off of what you're saying your fear about well if eli's face and moose's face you could have a face first face match and i think if you had a title program between eli drake and moose eli is an established guy and you know moose is trying to get to that level not saying that he isn't established but you know moose has been working for the most part upper mid card so to work a program with eli that would really elevate moose so mm-hmm. I, I like to believe Eli is going to stay, but I mean, you never know. Uh, I don't knock a, any of these wrestlers who decide to depart, you know, for a better opportunity due to financial re- reasons. Hey, that's fine, you know, but you just kind of hate seeing people leave where, you know, under the impact umbrella, they're able to, they're given the opportunity to, for the most part to achieve and do, you know, all the things they want to do in their career. Whereas over there, you know, you got to wait in line. And I mean, you see the track record record with so many people going over there. You got people over there been waiting years, waiting to break through and they haven't, but you know, it always resorts to, Hey, but I look at my bank account. And so if that's what matters, you know, matters to him, like I said, no, no criticism on my end, but I hope they're able to keep him. They need to just have a serious discuss talk with him, see, you know, where his mind is. I mean, try to find a way to keep this uh, relationship going in the in the, for now and the foreseeable future. I, I, I could I, I hate I, I do it all the time. I always compare you know wrestlers to other wrestlers you know or, or from the past. And you know we've talked about Eli being like The Rock, Ric Flair, etc. But in the role that he's in at the moment, I can see him transitioning into that kind of Eddie Guerrero, cool, likable face who cheats but does it in a way that the crowd like. I don't want to call him a tweener because Eddie was a full-on face at this point. But, you know, I could see him being that kind of, you know, cool cat. So, well, we'll see where it goes. And then, one, more, one more comment. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. The one thing I will say is that if, if they're able to resign and bring him on board, they need to market him as the guy. Because I think that's kind of been the, the biggest thing with Impact and even old TNA. You know, their ability to market certain individuals. Like, try to be able to have, I'm sure they have some sort of relationships where you can have, you know, the champion <laughs> appear on, you know, some talk shows or whatever like that. And I know that's something that the other company does, but I think marketing him as the guy. So I think if if they're if they're able to resign him, they need to market him as he's the guy. He's in the face of impact or one of the faces of impact. Yeah, absolutely. I, I well, I, I don't know what it's like over in the states. I know you obviously you have your, your morning shows across the American things, but yeah, we we see WWE guys appearing on all kinds of weird, you know, crap over here. Uh, you know, I, I remember watching a cookery program where the, the Dudleys were on. You know, <laughs> so yeah, if they can get on a, a cookery program, I'm, I'm sure that uh, when uh, Impact come back over, you know, you can get someone on on those anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. Josh and Don run down this uh, next week's matches. 
Um, the Callis calls him the master of chess. That's Eli, by the way. Uh, so he always has a, a chance. Uh, I'd like Callis. You know, I've said it last week. I don't really want to dwell on it, but you know, I'm already not missing Sanjay. <laughs> After talking weeks about how good I thought Sanjay was, that was only compared to uh, obviously Borash. Um, Callis is, is just a level above. Yeah, I, I I love the you know I guess it's the element of that heel commentator. I mean, I know some people probably don't care for it. He's not too over the top with it, but I think his little jabs there they're quite hilarious. Yeah. So anyway, um, next up was Mackenzie Mitchell talking to Kira Hulkster, the Hulkster, um, about her first pay per view match, brother. Uh, so yeah, um, I I was on the teleconference this week, which by the way, if you haven't listened to, it's on the channel. Uh, please do take a listen to it. Kira was on there, and Rohit um, Ranju was also on it, who was fantastic. Kira, not so much. Um, and once again, this promo was fine. It was all right. But this was all about Tessa, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. I will say this. I mean, I mean, this could, and I don't want to look too much into this, but I think if they wanted to just say down the road, they could really uh, tell a story between these two because here you got Tessa, who's this big name established, comes to Impact, and you know she's leaving to make her mark. Where with Kiara Hogan, you know she's this young upstart, so it's kind of like this established person kind of looking, thumbing her nose down on this rookie, so to speak. So you know, hopefully they can revisit this down the road once Kiara gets a little more seasoning and. I think they could be, you know, pull off a great feud. Could you imagine down the road when uh, Tessa has, you know, this big knockout star and impact and Kiara waits for her big shot and gets a match and takes the title from Tessa? That'd be some excellent storytelling if they were to commit to that. But like I said, I don't want to look too too much into it. Uh, I just want to I don't want to look too much into it. But I just think if they wanted to, you could. Here's the, here's the planting the seeds right here. Yeah, I have faith that they will because. They've played the long game with a lot of these characters in the in the knockouts division. You know, Ali being the perfect example. That took nearly two years, didn't it? So uh, I absolutely think that, that, you know, they have the ability to do that. OK. Uh, and by the way, Tessa I, looks like a million bucks. And, you know, I don't like to objectify women, but I quite often do. Uh, <laughs> apologies. Uh, uh, but she, she looked she looked fantastic. Anyway, um, Joseph Park and. Everyone's favorite TNA, oh, TNA Impact superstar, Grado, reunite backstage. Did you miss Grado? I want to say miss him, but you know what? Seeing him come back, I have a more, a be, excuse me, a better appreciation for him because you know what? We are always talking about, you know, putting guys in positions or, you know, guys and gals in positions, you know, where there's something for them to do. And not everybody's going to challenge for a championship. So, you know, having some comic relief, it's it's good. It's a night. It makes the show well rounded. Yeah, I, I just hope he hasn't taken Richard Justice's place. I mean, that would be disappointing. But anyway, I, I like Grado, and, and as I think I've said to you guys before, might have been offline, but uh, I've met him quite a few times in Glasgow because he, you know, he lives in the same place as me, and uh, he's a great guy. You know, out of the ring, he is such a nice guy. So anyway, uh, I, I I'm for one uh, genuinely pleased to see him back, even if he's not everyone's cup of tea. All right, talking of favorite wrestlers. You know, uh, OVE versus KM and Falabar. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know what it is about KM. I, I know he's not everyone's cup of tea. I really like him. And Falabar also, the two of them. I, I know they tease at the end that already there's dissension, but I really like these two. I hope they keep them together. I hope they're just faking us on, on a breakup. I just thought that the, the match was fine for what it was, but I, I didn't like the ending. It just seemed so kind of uh, sudden. Uh, Jake hits a couple, a series of kicks, and then just rolls them up. You know, I was looking for them doing some type of double team maneuver, and it, I don't know. It was just the finish. It just it seemed so abrupt. And then, you know, post match, I was looking for KM to kind of berate him, but you know, we get KM, you no, know, apologizing, talking about him not being there, and they shake hands. So I'm interested to see where this goes. <laughs> I've got, I just got a feeling that eventually it will be a KM Falabar feud um, with KM resorting to tight, but I kind of hope not because I, there is mileage in these two. You know, they are over the crowd, and you know they're they're all right, and and we haven't seen a big man tag team like this in quite some time because you know KM is a big dude, 
you know, and uh, in a different way to, to Falabar. So, um, yeah, it, it was fine. Once again, Ovi not looking like former tag champs in this match, were they? You know what? It, it uh, I was happy to see them get the win because it shows that they're still kind of a staple in the tag team. You know, right now they're not really in the title picture, but that's okay. We've been talking about not everyone needs to be in the title picture, but you can always plug them back in after, you know, you know everything that's going on with them as we speak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had another little recap. Uh, then on to McKenzie talks with Moose and how he plans to get the world title. Uh, we, we've talked about this before and you think that Moose is winning it at Slammiversary and I said bang for glory. After this promo, are you changing your mind? Well, I mean, with all the changes now, I mean, <laughs> I could see Slammiversary because you think about it, we're in May. So that's in July. I could see him winning at Slammiversary. The question is who he's taking the belt from. I had said Eli was walking in to Slammiversary as champion. I don't know if we're going to get there now, but I do think Moose will have be have a title match, and I think Moose will win at Slammiversary. I can I see if he... Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I still think it's bound for glory because this with Jimmy Jacobs walking in and, and having a Congo Kong match next week, I can see this being dragged out and, you know, keeping him away from the title for the, for the time being, you know, and building it slower. So maybe I'm wrong, but... I still think it, it's it's down for Bound for Glory. See, I think Bound for Glory, I could see more in the lines of Brian Cage, probably. Like, say, if they do the Bound for Glory series and he wins, you know, winning the title there. But, I mean, we, we have to wait and see. Like I said, Slammiversary, it's a couple months away. So, you know, we're going to get another set of tapings that's going to lead up into it. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with the championship. If I had to guess, I don't think Pentagon's walking in Slammiversary as champion, but that's just my guess. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next up, we got Taya versus Kira Hogan. Bruh. 24-inch pythons. Anyway, um, yeah, strangest, Matt. I found this really strange. And it, it follows on from what I said last week, that they seem to have really called on Taya. And she's now become, like Sienna, a mid-card act, you know, within the knockouts division. You know, she was there. And it was all about Hogan versus Tessa in this. And it, even when Tessa came down, it just seemed strange that, Tire disappeared. I, I don't know if you found found this. You know, when I looked at it this point, this go around, because I found it ironic. I said this is the second time where, you know, you have you're using Taya versus K uh, Kira Hogan, at you know to really um, extend. I don't want to say extend, but just for Tessa's benefit. But I think you know when you're looking at with Taya and then even with a Johnny Impact. You know, I know they have a wedding coming up soon, so I think probably for the time being, they're not really in any uh, long-term storyline plans. So I think they can easily uh, thrust her back into the mix of things when she comes back. I mean, there's a lot going on right now in the knockouts division. But yeah, you know, you hate to see that because I think Taya is a big deal. You know, she, you know, the way that I look at her, she kind of strikes me as this brute knockout. You know, kind of like Sienna. And what I'm saying, just Brutus, they have the ability to just toss these women around like, you know, nobody's yeah. business. So while you hate to see kind of an angle be extended at the expense of Taya, I think she'll be all right. Like I said, I think with her in, you know, the wedding that they have going on and congratulations to them. I think they probably figure, hey, you know, we're going to let you guys take care of that. And then when you come back, you know, we'll have plans for you guys. So and we but, never uh, got a match, should we, with her? Uh... With Rosemary, that's all finished now. Hopefully, that she said on the teleconference I was on with her that that you know that's something that could still happen, and she you know you have to wait and see. Well, I have waited, and now I'm seeing it's not happening. She let me on. I mean, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Let me on. But what, the thing I was just going to add on, man, that DDT that Tessa hit, I yeah. mean that that was a <laughs> that was some sick stuff, man. But uh, she's really making a mark in Impact, and I think that's good, and I think that's going to help if she's going to be feuding with Kiera instead of kind of right away challenging for the knockout championship, I think that's going to help care the most, obviously, with care being the upstart. Because, you know, a lot of us know who Tessa is. Or, you know, if we don't know, you know, you're obviously, you know, she's no name in the indies. So I think a, a, a feud with her, which I'm going to assume that Tessa would, would you know become victorious i think that'll help elevate kiera and then like i said previously down the road they can revisit this where kiera is a little more seasoned and then 
there you go right there now j- just talking to the finisher um the impact uh twitter twitter handle called it a hammerlock ddt they haven't given it a name yet but it was it's a great move and i've got to say fair play to kira she she sold it really well and i like in the red and yellow hair that she has i know she she, she has red hair she is going full hogan colors here next week she's gonna shirt i think as she comes in and come out to real american yeah that's what we want to say <laughs> anyway uh so then we had a vignette for brian cage before we uh shot over to australia mate uh ripper what do you think of this one once again they they seem to have and we see ele- evolution with his matches now because when he first started it was a lot of uh you know he the first couple matches he was just running through fools <laughs> so to speak but now we're seeing where there's a format laid out. And the one thing I'm going to say with Brian Cage, you look at him as this big, big force. But his moveset, like in this match, he did more things that you would uh, compare more to a, an X Division guy than you would uh, heavyweight or super heavyweight. And I think that's great for him. I really think with him, and I, I hate to use this a lot because I'm sure this is been used for a whole bunch of people it's equivalent to like when people used to if you're familiar with uh basketball where people used to compare the next michael jordan or the next lebron i really think just for what he's capable of doing i'm not saying he's gonna be exactly aj styles but to be able to fly like how he's able to fly and be able to um, execute the moves and display the power of strength that he's able to i think they can have that with him and just my biggest takeaway from this match, while the other participants it made it believable that they had just as much a shot as Brian Cage, I think now after seeing him perform in this, if they were going to put him in the X Division, I, even though I feel like he's too big for that and I really liked him to tailor it more to the cru- cruiserweights at this point, if you were to throw him in there, it'd be an easy transition because he could do a lot of that stuff that those uh, those guys can do. And it was displayed in this match, seeing him do Rana's, seeing him do a plancha, like all that stuff. I mean, that's incredible for a guy of his size. You think about 10, 15 years ago, to see something like that was just foreign. Yeah, absolutely. And that's our, our question for listeners there. Where do you want to see Brian Cage? Where, where do you think he will fit in in the next, well, few months uh, leading up to Slammiversary? Do you see him going into the X Division? Do you see him taking a, the Grand Championship route? Or do you think he'll be main eventing? Let us know. Drop us a comment. All right. Okay. And he got the win, by the way. We didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that was never in doubt. That was never in doubt. Uh, by the fact we didn't even name the other participants in the match. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably says a lot. Anyway. Uh, up next was Phantasma, Aristar, and Drago versus Xavier, Everett, and DJZ, Lucha Libre rules. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I was going to be very insulting and say, yeah, spot fest alert, but it was better than that. <laughs> it was really good. You know what? It was. It is what it is. I mean, when I watched it, as much as I enjoyed it, and, you know, it was fast paced, it was a spot fest. And that's okay. It's something that you don't want to see all the time. If they're going to do it like, because I, I can't remember the last time. I mean, even at Redemption, when they had the the six six uh, way match, I mean, it wasn't as spot heavy. I don't, uh, don't want to say. But with this one, it, it was. But it was okay. Everybody got their stuff in. I mean, it was great. I'm just happy to see that the Impact guys won because I was starting to get worried with this partnership. I mean, dang, you know, we already put the world title on, you know, one of their guys. We don't need to be bending over backwards for these guys. I mean, our guys need to get over too. But, yeah, I, I – here's another guy that – you know, not that I didn't have anything against him before, but seeing DJ Z back, I have a better appreciation for him. And I really hope – you know, I know right now, I guess they're going to do the tag team thing, which is fine. I really hope down the road they take a chance with him and see w- what they can do as far as him moving up the card. I really think if you wanted to try him out in the main event, I don't think that'd be such a bad idea. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I usually disagree with, with the X, X Division guys going up there. But, you know, DJ Z, I, I can see that. I, I see more believable in him than someone like uh, Matt Sedell. But anyway... So, yeah, uh, it was good, as you say, to see the, the, the Impact guys winning. But I just feel that Phantasma has been booked hopelessly. He's one of the few victims of the booking since since Damore and Callis have come in. I, I just, they've had nothing for him other than eating pins. I know he won last week, but that was a rare one. 
And uh, they just, they even missed him off a post, didn't they? I think for uh, redemption. Uh, and, he, and he tweeted about it. They've booked him horribly. And, he, and he's been in the company now for a year. So anyway. We'll yeah, see. They, they, you know what? I mean, he did get a, a title match on, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I, I think it was, I don't know if it was when Ishimori was so champion. Um, I think the place for him at this point, if I had asked, X Division, Tag Division at this point. And I mean, as we start seeing more so in, you know, in oncoming weeks, I mean, they'll figure out something. But what they're going to have to do is with these partnerships, stop throwing him in those, okay, well, we're, we're going up against AAA, we're going up against Lucha. Oh, let's put Phantasma in there. They got to break him away from that. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like how they break away Ishimori. Uh, they broke away Ishimori from when they were, you know, having a lot of the Noah people, and Ishimori started doing his own thing. Do that with Phantasma. There's something there with him. Absolutely, uh, Phantasma. I think is is a guy who could be a mid card belt holder again. You know, he seems bigger than most of the X Division guys, but anyway, uh, as in physically bigger. Right. Okay. A couple of promos up next. So Aries and Drake talking about Drake cashing in next week. Um, so so promo continuing the uh, i suppose the subtle heel turn of aries and that he's going up against although a heel a fan favorite so yeah um, it did what it did then you know obviously do i want to talk about former world champions talking or do i want to talk about cam and falabar more you know which one i'm going with so yeah so uh, what did you think of uh, cam and falabar here yeah it's just it's <laughs> uh, what should i say roots <laughs> He, he's talking like brute now, isn't he? All he can say is, bah, bah. <laughs> you know, it just, you just see with KM, it's just like, I just don't trust him. So it just, he seems so disingenuous about everything he's doing. And he, you wonder what he's trying to do. Maybe he's trying to capitalize off of um, follow boss popularity. So he figures, you know, teaming with him and, you know, if I get along with him, people will like me. Cause you know, a lot of times that, you know, they give him a lot of flack, but who do you think? I mean, this is the second uh, week in a row where we see somebody laid out and we see this. It looks like kind of a, um, it's like an X symbol. But who do you think this, this mystery guy is? Or gal, I should say. Um, well, it's like the X-Man symbol. So it could be Xavier. Uh, <laughs> Desperate Xavier. That, 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 that was a, a very tenuous link. I, d I don't actually know. Uh, it's most probably going to be either someone returning or, or re-debuting. And uh, although I have read the spoilers, I can't remember for the life of me who it is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they revealed it. Um, but if I do suggest anyone, it is pure speculation and a guess, by the way. But I, I don't know. Um, it's bound to be someone smaller because he's obviously going after X Division guys. I'm guessing that's what the X means. Uh, who's he taking out? It didn't. It wasn't anyone famous either week, is it? No, no, no. They, 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 I want to say they've just been like backstage people. But, you know, I find it interesting. I mean, I, I, uh, I'll be honest, I was trying to look to see if uh, there's one guy who's in Lucha Underground, maybe if he was debuting. But, I mean, I couldn't find anything. So, you know, I'll wait and see. Mil Muertes. Oh. Huh? Was that Mil Muertes? No, I had looked up. I thought maybe it was Kill, kill Shot. But uh, I, I just hope whoever it is, you know, I hope it's not a letdown, and I don't think it will be. But you know, you see something like this, and like say, if they it, it turned out to be they're bringing back suicide, like you know, <laughs> womp womp womp, you know. <laughs> There's another question for everyone. But not we don't want to know who it is. Who would be the biggest disappointment? <laughs> what could be the worst possible reveal? Come on, let us know in the comments. I'm going to go for Tito Ortiz. Um, if it's him again, it would be hilariously bad if it was. I'm fairly certain it's not. There you go. Uh, do, you, do you want to throw out the worst reveal possible? What would you go for? Oh, man, man. I'll come back to you if you want. <laughs> what? No, I I mean, and I don't want to say that, you know, he's bad, but I think Suicide, just because for me, that character, they've found so much mileage with a guy who was based off of a video game that came out almost 10, 10 years ago. And, you know, the fact that he's still around, and if that's the one that they're using, I mean, that would just... You know, kind of like, you know, when, when the Pac-Man gets eaten by the ghost, that sound that it makes. <laughs> All right. OK, uh, well, next up, we had Ishimori, who has been quite quiet since uh, losing the title. I, 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 you know, we've talked about him before that this guy, uh, he, he's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. And he could do with the Jimmy Jacobs talking for him. Um, but there you go. Um, once again, 
great match, although it didn't seem particularly long unless I um, I missed something. You know, for me, out of their three matches that they had, I want to say, and, you know, to each his own, but this was the weakest. And you know, look, I understand when you're facing somebody on multiple occasions, it's hard to kind of recapture what you might have captured in the first couple matches. I mean, it was fine, but, you know, compared to the last two title matches, like the one thing that I like seeing Ishimori do, actually two, and he didn't do it in this match, I like when he runs out and off the um, the post, the second rope post or whatever, he does that uh, moonsault to the outside. And then also I like what he does is when he slides under and he does a springboard senton and then uh, rips, well, I don't want to say rip, but takes his shirt off. It's just those are the type of moves that like where he, you know, he's getting his offense going and we didn't see any of that. And I'm not saying that was the deal breaker for me, but it just didn't seem like this match, the past couple matches, you know, were far superior for me. Do you think it's a sign he's on his way out? I mean, it could be. And you know, it's unfortunate, but I think moving forward, this helps impact with their partnerships to let them know like, hey, um, you know, with certain guys, hey, we'll give them a give them a shot. And you know, with Ishimori, he was he's been booked well, and I think a lot of that has to do with his ring work. I mean, his stuff, and I think you pointed out, it's just so crisp. Like I never have a worry with him, and I know things happen. I never have a worry about with him botching a move. Like it's just everything is just so clean, just so clean, and like you can appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't look choreographed and those kind of things. It just seems natural and fluid, doesn't it? It, it, it he's a top, top wrestler, you know, one of one of one of the best in the business, you know, because it looks like the things move. The, the only thing letting him down in this country is obviously his ability to talk, um, you know, um English. So uh or American or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we're international here, we'll call it British. There you go. Um yeah, so uh, it's a shame if he goes, but I I've got to say I think most people will look back fondly and say he had a really good run. He was used well, unlike, you know, your Sonatas or people like that who, who were looked pretty awful by, by previous regimes. So I'd like to think that even if he does go at some point, he could come back uh, because I don't think he's been booked badly. And I don't think he could look back on this and say, do you know what? They've let me down here. I think they've done a good job. So, um, yeah. So then we had Tommy and uh, Eddie Edwards having a chat. <laughs> not really <laughs> it was do you know what although this was a nothing spot um it carried on the storyline because we didn't have much eddie edwards um and sammy callahan stuff this week did we so it was good that it was there just to continue the storyline which is what we've been talking about they're really good at doing this just keeping us interested within a two-hour show keeping us interested in things that may not actually feature on that show this week yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was nothing major, but like I said, to, to able to continue the storyline without showing both people, you know, they were just selling off Eddie's actions and, you know, Tommy just g giving him a pep talk. So, yeah, I was fine with it. Good. Um, right. So then we, a couple of backstage segments before the main event, we had Ali talking to uh, Rosemary and Rosemary telling her, promise me that you won't come down. Uh, which, yeah, that, that, that was a that was a pinky promise they weren't keeping, wasn't it? But uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, then the LAX lair. No money, no titles, no shipments, no girls, no alcohol, no Conan. What's going on? Uh, they're not happy, and they, they still don't know where he is, Conan, uh, but they promise that they're not going to lose to Andrew Everett and DJ Z. Now, someone pulled me up on the comments section last week saying that they don't think LAX are anywhere near the best tag team. They stated... The Usos were better than LAX. What do you make about that? All right. I'll get into the segments and then I'll answer that comment. I think the first one with Ali and Rosemary, the thing I didn't like, I, I thought I liked, like, I, I'm okay with the um, alliance between Rosemary, well, the friendship, I guess, between Rosemary and Ali. But in this, I didn't like kind of like, it seemed kind of a, I want to say like a love story, so to speak. Whatever you do, don't come out here. But you're my best friend. I'm going to come out there. No, don't do it. Promise us. Like, I, that was a little bit too much. And then with the LAX segment, you know, a part of me, and I, I can't see them doing it, but a part of me had me thinking that maybe they might go, If should they lose next week, maybe LAX will disband for the time being. And it has me interested because we always are talking about with LAX, you know, once they... 
or whether they in the title picture and have the titles or chasing it, they get stale relatively quick. And I think right now this really gives them something to do while they're not in the title picture currently at the moment. You know, they we don't know where Conan is. Okay, we're hearing about this guy King. You know, they feel like they're losing everything because they don't have the titles, so they're kind of desperate. So I, it has me interested again. You know, they don't seem sta- seem as stale. Now, as far as best tag team, I mean, that's deb- debatable. I think a lot of times the thing you have to take into account is is somebody if is 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 somebody just being biased because you know they follow this product. So obviously, wh- whomever's there, you could take towards tag team there. They're better than somebody in Impact, or they generally feel that way. Um, it to me, it's to each his own. I mean, if I had to say best tag team. I and, and it's so so crazy because I was you know I don't even think I was around when they were tagging, but I've always liked the natural disasters. But if you oh, told, no, I, mean, I mean tag teams now, not, not oh oh time. now, oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I wouldn't go so far as saying LAX were the best tag team now. No, I mean that, that, if it was all time we're talking about, I mean there's obviously the Bushwhackers, but um, <laughs> no, I'm talking about now today in today's wrestling. I think they're the best t- tag team around. You know what? See, it's hard for me to say just because I, at this point in my life, I really only follow Impact. But if I had to say, I'm just going to just go out on a limb, and I think they're still tagging. I really think the Motor City Machine Guns, I really think they're awesome. And I loved them when they were in Impact. But let me just go just based off of Impact tag teams. And I know we don't have that much. I, and look, I'm the minority in this. I really like OVE. And I know a lot of people, that's not everyone's cup of tea. And I'm not, and LAX is good, but it's just something with OVE, man. I, I don't know if it's their characters or what. To me, they're my favorite tag team in Impact. So I'm going with OVE. Okay. All right. Well, well there you go. That's what it's all about. Everyone uh, disagreeing with each other. So that's good. Uh, once again, if any of you think the Usos are better than LAX or even OVE are better than LAX, let us know and uh, uh, somehow I'll prove you all wrong. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh, by the way, Conan not being on the show, I thought um, it's really been helpful to uh, Ortiz and Santana. You know, they've developed their characters a bit more. I still don't think they're ready to go their separate ways. I still think they need to tag for a bit longer. But, you know, I said all along, these guys will eventually be single stars. Uh, and I certainly think Santana has, has got more to him than Ortiz. But, you know, I, I'm really liking their work even without Conan there and as you say it's kept it fresh kept it interesting it'll be interesting to see who King is let's see if Conan comes back we'll see all right okay so main event time right okay what can I say about this Uh, awesome (laughs) there you go that's my review thanks for tuning in guys no uh, bro (laughs) Uh, it it was great this match really had everything you know that you know, had great production value. I, I know the crowd weren't super, well, they, they should have been super into it. They, they were pretty lifeless all, all evening. But I just thought this, this was really good. You know, um, it, Ali coming down to add an extra element to it after she promised that she wouldn't. That finish uh, was, 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 was brutal, you know, really hard hitting. So I just thought it was great. You know, what I thought it was was a tease, but a good type of tease because. It gave, you know, on the surface, when you hear these two participants, you know, you're thinking like, wow, why wouldn't they save this for like a pay-per-view? Because this was, this is a big deal. But it gave us kind of a tease. And I think maybe this was a way um, to write off Rosemary because I think she's uh, dealing with some some type of injury. And that that's one thing where I'm giving credit to Impact on is it seems like now what they're doing is some of these storylines with some of these wrestlers, they're using that as a way to... You know, if someone's dealing with injuries or they got something personal going on, they're being rolled off, but they're they're going to be able to kind of put them back into the mix as, you know, they get once they get back instead of it just abruptly ending. And, uh, you know, Sue Young, man, Sue Young looked amazing in this. I thought hitting that uh, her finisher off the ramp into that table, that was just incredible. And then to have her whole, I think she's calling the Legion come out and having Ali Ali coming out and you could say Ali is the reason why that you know this happened to Rosemary her interference which I mean doesn't really make much sense because the lady I think I want to say the Legion came out before Ali did but you know anyways see that's here nor there but they really got something going now you can go in so many different directions because now you know Ali's gonna probably want 
revenge in her friend's sake because they didn't you know buried her friend then when you have rosemary come back why wow, she could feud with uh su young for whatever su young you know for what su young did you might have a feud with ali kind of like i told you you know had you not interfered this wouldn't have happened so there's so many different angles they can go and that's amazing and you know at some point the coffin's going to be a ringside and it'll open and someone will be in there uh, to interfere and it'll be tito ortiz with his big red x uh, <laughs> no, well, you're quite right. That, you know that what they've done really well here is that the three of them have a genuine reason to be facing each other at different times. You know, Rosemary can come back to either go after Ali or Sue Young. Sue Young can go after Ali again now. Ali can stick up for Rosemary. Rosemary can go after. You know, it, it just makes it really interesting, and it gives these three something to do. So, not something to do. But they're the champions, you know, and it's the championship belt. But excellent storytelling again really really good storytelling the only thing that really annoys me is when you read online people saying oh right so young uh, so she's a female undertaker ripoff and it's just like well come on uh, you know you could have room for more than one character in this business you know it's just ridiculous when people say that yeah you can't you can't pay a, uh, pay any attention to it. it's just it's just like if you go on the impact the uh, twitter you're always going to see somebody you know trolling and stuff i mean Hey, to each his own, man. I mean, if that's what you do in your life, you feel compelled to, you know, go and always post negative stuff, have at it. I just think, like, could you imagine in the, I, for so, some, of, some of these people, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but there's this uh, this guy, he, he's a, um, he does a talk show or a debate show, and uh, his name's Skip Bayless, and so many people hate him, and they always, you know, tweet at him saying the most negative things, but he doesn't check them. So you're essentially talking to somebody who's never going to see what you're talking about, but mm. that makes you feel good about yourself and boost your self-esteem hey, to each his own. Yep. And, and feel free to insult Ro and myself. Uh, <laughs> if you're listening to this, <laughs> we have very broad shoulders uh, and a broad gut as well. <laughs> For me anyway, not maybe not Ro. He works out. Right. Uh, well, I think that's time to call it. Uh, unless you want to run through next week. What have we got next week? Yeah, for sure. So we're going to get I'll, obviously, I'll start with the main event first. We're going to get Pentagon defend, defending the Impact World Championship against Eli Drake, who will be cashing in his Feast of Fire briefcase. We're also getting Moose versus Congo Kong, which is interesting because we haven't seen Congo Kong since he put, you know, well, wrestle since he put uh, Johnny Impact on the show. We're also getting the tag team of DJZ and Andrew Everett versus LAX, which should be interesting. And then we're also getting an X Division number one contenderships match. And I got to say this. And I, I, I first wasn't going to make a comment about it, but I do find this funny because we're getting Aerostar versus Phantasma versus Drago versus Ishimori. And the reason why I find this funny was they had advertised this match before Ishimori's X Division Championship match. So in a sense, it kind of gave away the result. So, uh, um, but yeah, so Ishimori's getting another shot to be number one contender again. So, but that, that's our rundown. Okay, and I think uh, out of those matches, I've got a feeling that LAX Everett DJZ match is going to steal the night, the show of the night, the match of the night, I should say. That'll be yeah. my predict. Anyway, that's the show. Uh, as we said at the beginning, uh, leave us some comments. Happy to, to have a look at them, chat about them on the show. If they if we think that there's something chat worthy there, hit the subscribe and always hit either the like or dislike. We really don't care. All feedback is good feedback. Uh, but for the time being, hope you enjoyed this week's show, both Impact and the Impact Lounge Review. Uh, I'm Adam. Good night, Ro. All right. Good, good night, Adam. Everyone take care.